Now, start now. My name is John Talbot. I was a member of the 322nd Bomb Group in World War II. Prior to the war, I had a rather unique thing in that uh, I was a, an aluminum welder at the Martin Bomber Plant in Baltimore, Maryland, working on the B-26 uh, prior to the Japs bombing Pearl Harbor. In fact, I was working, uh, if you remember, the on the B-26 in the pilot compartment, there's a, from the, in, in the middle of the windshield, there's a uh, aluminum frame that comes up, and then the frame goes around this way, and you're, uh, escape hatches are up here, I welded that uh, joint and because of the government inspectors you had to put your stamp on that weld and it was a very intricate type weld because of the fact that it was a heavy piece of aluminum and I was the only one at the factory at that time doing those welds and uh, I have had the privilege of flying airplanes and have seen my stamp up there. I thought, my God, I hope that thing holds together one more time. But uh, I thought that was rather unusual. After the war started, I tried to get into the Navy Air Corps. My brother was in the Navy Air Corps and my best friend went in the Navy Air Corps. And in Baltimore, I tried to join the Navy, and they wouldn't take me, said my eyes were not good enough. So then I went to the Army Air Corps, and they said my eyes weren't good enough. So uh, I left Baltimore and came to St. Louis and tried, and in both cases, I was told my eyes weren't good enough. I uh, then went to Kansas City and went to work as a welder for the North American bomber plant building B-25s and uh, it was my hope to someday be able to fly a medium twin engine bomber. I finally got was able to get in the Army Air Corps through the they had a recruiting team that came down to my hometown of Fayette, Missouri at Central College and my old family doctor examined me and he says hell there's nothing wrong with your eyes you're you're good, so he swore me in the so they swore me in the Army Air Corps that day. And a few days later I reported and took all of my training through the Western Training Command. And when I graduated and got my wings, I was at Stockton Field flying uh, twin engine planes and I stayed there as an instructor. One day I came back from in from uh, the instruction course the flying that day and there was my name on a bulletin board to go to uh, Roswell, New Mexico for training in four engine airplanes and I went to see the uh, CO and I said hey you know I don't want to fly uh, multi engines I want twin engines and he said well I've got one order to go to Greenville, Greensboro, North Carolina when he said Greensboro, North Carolina, I thought that I the, the the thought immediately popped in my mind of Greenville, South Carolina, where they had a B-25 base, and I thought, oh, this is going to be great, so I'll get to fly B-25. We drew cards. We cut a deck of cards to see who was going to get to fill that one order, and I won. And I had to leave that very day to go to Greensboro, North Carolina. I got to Greensboro, North Carolina and found out it was an overseas depot. It wasn't a training base for B-25s. Within 10 days, I was in England and uh, this was in, I'd been instructing in the twin engine planes there for several months. There were 75 pilots that were all instructors that were on this ship that I went overseas on. It was a little ship that had been captured at Dunkirk and was real small. It only had room for 75 people above the deck, I mean on above the hole. 
and they and down in the hole they had some Jamaicans that, that had been told if they'd go to England they'd get to be pilots. Well, they thought we 75 American instructors were going over to teach them to fly airplanes. We didn't know why we were going. None of us had had transition training. They sent me, when I got there, they sent me to the 322nd Bomb Group. I reported to operations at 449th Squadron. And uh, the man says, where did you have your uh, transition training? And I said, I've never had transition training. And he looked at me real peculiar. Of course, at that time, they were real hard up for pilots. They had, had some uh, high mortality rates, and they were just taking anything they could get. I didn't even know how to start a B-26. Dick, I'm telling you the truth. It was the funniest thing you ever saw in your life. The man says, you mean you don't know how to fly a B-26? I said, look, I've never been in one before. Other than the fact that I've worked on them in the factory. He called a crew chief over and said, would you mind taking this pilot out and showing him how to start the B-26 and fly? And... Uh, I shot landings for three days in a B-26 with his crew chief, who was scared to death. Well, of course, I was scared to death, too, because I'd never been, I didn't know how to fly one of these things. The third day after I reported, I flew as a co-pilot to Captain Jack, with Captain Jack Abuski on a combat mission. And from then on, we flew, uh, I flew with, uh, Captain Jack Abuski, uh most of the time, and then later got my own airplane, but uh, uh, it was that was where I had my transition training. I thought that was rather peculiar, really. And actually, to have flown planes that I could see that I helped build, you know, years ago, I thought that was real unusual. I don't have anything more to add, Dave. All right, uh, you... Uh what, the Martin Factory, about how long? Just about a year, though. About a year. And, uh, uh, this, uh, aluminum welding, that was a fairly new operation at that time, wasn't it? Uh, and a ticklish sort of operation? It was very ticklish because aluminum, if you get it too hot, it just falls apart. And, uh, that was such a big joint there that to weld that you almost you had to have somebody stand on the other side of it with a torch keeping it hot for you while you welded it. It wasn't electric welding, it was all gas welding. It was very, very intricate. That was the only operation that you did at the Martin Factory though? Just that one well. Just that one well. hard to say, I'd say a couple of hundred anyway, at least. <coughs> okay, now when you got over to the 322nd group, uh, what was the time frame there approximately? Uh, they had already left England and gone to Beauvais, France. And uh, when I got to England, while well, they flew me over to Beauvais, or flew me to Paris first, and I lived in the old Rothschild Chateau out in the Bois de Boulogne for just a few days, and then they transferred me right on up to uh, to Beauvais, where the 322nd was stationed. This was in this was in uh, uh, October, November of 1944. Okay, uh, General Sam. Uh, Colonel Sam was the CO, yeah. And our squadron CO was a major ruse at that, at that time. Now, you did uh, ultimately get to fly first pilot mission, though? Yeah, right towards the last, I did. Were you there, uh, or did you fly a uh, mission uh, in response to the Battle of the Bulge? Yes, uh huh, certainly. Let's not sure about that. Well, uh, we had, uh, I flew with Jack Abuski then. Of course, we couldn't fly for several days there. It was just, uh, we could hear the fighting and see the guns going 